Imagine to find yourself trapped inside a submarine, sinking uncontrollably into the depths of the ocean. The mere thought of it is enough to send shivers down your spine. We all know that as a submarine descends deeper into the ocean, the pressure exerted by the surrounding water becomes increasingly intense, eventually causing the vessel to implode. But have you ever wondered about the intricate details of what actually happens when a submarine or any submersible reaches its maximum operating depth, also known as its crush depth? Today, we embark on a journey of exploration, diving deep into the mysteries of the underwater world and shedding light on the fascinating realm of submersibles. Join me as we unravel the secrets of the Titan submersible and discover the incredible stories hidden beneath the surface. Our adventure begins on November 15th, 2017, when the Argentinian submarine, ARA San Juan, vanished a few hundred miles off the coast of Argentina. As the days passed by, hope dwindled, until a report by the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization revealed a hydroacoustic anomaly detected about 30 nautical miles north of the sub's last known location. It was speculated that this anomaly resulted from the collapse of the submarine's pressure hull. But here's the intriguing part. How did they determine the depth at which the collapse occurred, considering it would have happened long before reaching the ocean floor? The answer lies in a phenomenon known as the bubble pulse effect. During an underwater implosion or explosion, the gas bubble within the structure oscillates, continuously collapsing and expanding before eventually dissipating. This pulse can be measured acoustically, allowing us to calculate the depth of the collapse event. In the case of ARA San Juan, the bubble pulse frequency indicated an implosion depth of 1,275 feet underwater. But determining the implosion depth is just the beginning. It also helps us estimate the energy released during the collapse. In the case of ARA San Juan, the energy released was equivalent to the explosion of 12,500 pounds of TNT. The surrounding water pressure at that depth was a staggering 570 PSI, and the submarine's hull would have collapsed at over 1,500 miles per hour. Terrifying, isn't it? Yet despite these chilling details, no one has ever experienced the implosion of a submarine firsthand. Why is that the case, you might wonder? Well, it turns out that the human brain takes a certain amount of time to process pain. It could range from 100 milliseconds to 2 seconds, depending on the situation. The collapse of ARA San Juan's pressure hull took a mere 40 milliseconds to obliterate completely. So even if the crew was aware of the impending collapse, they never had a chance to experience it consciously. Their deaths would have been instantaneous, sparing them the horrors of the actual implosion. Moreover, when a submarine collapses, it creates an environment similar to a large diesel engine. The extreme pressure causes air within the sub to become extremely hot, potentially igniting any hydrocarbon vapors present. The sheer force of implosion, combined with the bubble pulse effect, leaves no bodies behind to be recovered. It's a tragic reality, but the dynamics of an underwater collapse make it nearly impossible to retrieve the remains of those on board. However, amidst these tales of tragedy, there have been extraordinary instances where people managed to survive the sinking of a submarine. For depths up to 600 feet, special submarine escape immersion suits can protect the crew as they make their way to an escape hatch or a torpedo tube. The ascent from such depths would take around three to four minutes, a traumatic experience fraught with panic, oxygen narcosis, and perforated eardrums. But what happens when the sub goes even deeper, rendering escape suits useless? That's where the submergence rescue vehicle comes into play. The Russian Priz class vessel made of titanium can rescue up to 16 people at a time from depths of up to 3,200 feet. Some submarines, like the Russian Typhoon class, are equipped with escape pods, but their reliability in actual emergencies remains questionable. One of the most remarkable rescue attempts in submarine history was the USS Squalus incident. In May of 1939, during its 19th test dive, the Squalus suffered a catastrophic malfunction that caused it to sink to the ocean floor. Trapped in sealed compartments, the crew had limited air supply and could only hope for a miracle. They released a buoy with a telephone attached, praying that the rescue team would find it. For the first time, a rescue attempt beyond 40 feet succeeded. 
The crew of Squalus, sitting 243 feet below the surface, anxiously awaited their fate. Their prayers were answered when their sister boat, Sculpin, spotted the buoy and exchanged a few words before an ocean swell snapped the line. However, within 24 hours, rescue ships arrived with an experimental device, the rescue bell. A hard hat diver descended to connect a cable from the winch inside the bell to the sub. The bell was then lowered, precisely positioning it above the sunken submarine's hatch. One by one, the stranded crew members climbed into the bell, finally reaching the surface after three more trips. It was a near-miraculous rescue that defied all odds. But the story doesn't end there. The U.S. Navy dedicated another 113 days to salvage the submarine itself. The plan was to attach pontoons to the hull, making it buoyant enough to raise it off the ocean floor. The process involved filling the pontoons with water to create negative buoyancy and then pumping air to displace the water, lifting the submarine. However, the first attempt failed when the bow rose too quickly, slipping out of the cables. Eventually, on September 13, 1939, USS Squalus was successfully towed back to port, albeit with the loss of 26 crew members. Remarkably, less than a year later, Squalus was repaired, recommissioned as USS Sailfish, and served during World War II. The crew was forbidden to mention the word Squalus while on board. Today, the conning tower is displayed at a park in the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, serving as a reminder of the resilience and sacrifice of those who lived through the harrowing ordeal. As we reflect on these gripping stories of survival and tragedy, we find ourselves drawn to the recent loss of the Titan submersible on June 20, 2023. A marvel of engineering vanished in the international waters of the North Atlantic Ocean near Newfoundland, Canada. Its ill-fated mission was to explore the wreckage of the RMS Titanic. Tragically, all five individuals aboard, a British billionaire, one of Pakistan's richest men, his son, a famed French explorer, including Stockton Rush, the founder and CEO of OceanGate. Before we dive deeper into the specifics of this tragedy, Let's begin our exploration of the background surrounding this tragic incident by delving into the history of OceanGate, the company responsible for the ill-fated Titan. OceanGate Incorporated, an American company privately held and headquartered in Everett, Washington, specializes in supplying submersibles for various purposes, including tourism, research, and exploration. It was established in 2009 by two individuals, Stockton Rush and Guillermo Solon. Notably, OceanGate's inception was influenced by Stockton's unrealized aspiration of becoming an astronaut. Having previously worked as a flight test engineer for the F-15 Eagle, Stockton redirected his passion toward the exploration of the undersea realm. Adding an eerie twist to our unfolding narrative, it's worth mentioning that Stockton's wife, Wendy Rush, is a descendant of Isidore and Ida Strauss, who tragically perished in the Titanic disaster. This familial connection adds an extra layer of intrigue to the story that is about to unfold before us. The implosion depth of the Titan was nearly ten times greater than that of ARA San Juan, subjecting it to water pressure ten times stronger at the time of the accident. For every descent of ten meters, equivalent to 32.8 feet, the pressure intensifies by one atmosphere or 14.7 pounds per square inch, PSI. The resting place of the RMS Titanic lies at an astonishing depth of 28,500 feet, with its fragmented remnants spread across a span of 2,600 feet. This colossal depth, combined with the remote positioning of the ship, 400 miles away from the Newfoundland coast, creates a vivid depiction of the hazardous environment that awaits any daring deep-sea expedition. OceanGate's Titanic expeditions came with a hefty price tag of up to $2,500 per person. However, the firm's mission was more than just catering to deep-sea tourism. They aspired to advance research on the wreck and its surrounding debris, unveiling the mysteries shrouding the deep sea. While we may never truly know what the crew of five experienced in their final moments, it is entirely possible that their thoughts were filled with a mix of joy, exhilaration, and anticipation, unaware of the horror that awaited them milliseconds later. Imagine the harrowing final moments of the crew, confined within a carbon fiber vessel, enveloped by darkness. Their resources were limited, and the supply of oxygen was rapidly depleting. 
the haunting fear of a slow and agonizing demise loomed heavily over them. Yet in the midst of this tragedy, death would have come swiftly, bringing a merciful end to their suffering. The Titan, an engineering marvel, was meticulously crafted using a mesh weave of carbon fiber, a remarkably strong and remarkable material. However, despite its impressive properties, carbon fiber was still relatively new and not as extensively studied as conventional materials such as steel and aluminum. The Titan represented an exciting frontier in deep-sea exploration, a vessel specifically designed to withstand the immense pressures found in the depths of the ocean. It heralded the dawn of a potential era in commercial underwater exploration, offering the promise of venturing into the abyss for both scientific research and deep-sea tourism. However, there is one important question that remains unanswered. Do you believe that the cause of the incident can be attributed to inadequate examination of the submarine or the CEO's lack of leadership? Alternatively, could something as trivial as the game controller? Or is there a larger and more mysterious explanation, suggesting that the individuals involved may not have actually perished, but instead were intentionally hidden to generate controversy and garner free publicity for the company? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And like always, with that said, thanks for watching, and until next time.